All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the VGF Strat Corner podcast, uh, where we continue on with the uh, the Tech and Six characters. Uh, I know everyone's uh, getting all pumped for Tag Two, but uh, you know if you're going to prepare for Tag Two without actually having the game, you know it's uh, good to take a look back at uh, Tech and Six and try to wrap your head around uh, all those strategies and the characters that you're looking forward to. So uh, with that, I am uh, Scott, a.k.a. Zhang on the boards, uh, your normal host as always. And uh, this time we're taking a look at Anna. Uh, so hopefully uh, there's a lot of people out there who, are, uh, who aren't who are familiar with Anna. I know there's not a lot of uh, players out there, at least not that I've seen. So uh, a lot of this stuff will be new to me for sure. So hopefully we can uh, teach you a little bit of something. Um, so my guest today uh, comes highly recommended, although I will admit that uh, I actually don't know a lot about him. So uh, I'll introduce him with that. Hell, what's going on, Mr. Taxi? Um, uh, yeah, I'm highly recommended. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I should say recommended. I mean, there's not uh, a lot of uh, Anna players out there. In fact, I, I can't even think of like one big name Anna player off the top of my head. Uh, well, there are, there, are three, there are three Anna players in Virginia. Well, there's four, but there's uh, three in Southern Virginia, like 30 minutes away from me. There's two others. Wow, so it's nowhere crazy. else in the country, but they're all just kind of chilling in Virginia. Yeah, it's uh, the Anna State, I guess. <laughs> I guess. So uh, for those who uh, aren't familiar with you, uh, like myself, uh, like I said, uh, um, you know, I got uh, kind of a little bit of a, a reference, I guess, uh, for you, for you, but, uh, uh, we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, uh, or anything like that. So kind of give, uh, myself and all of our listeners kind of a little bit of a background, like where, uh, you come from. Have you always been from Virginia? Are you always tech and player, you know, just kind of the roots. And then obviously, you know, how did you land on Anna? Well, uh, let's see. I started playing Tekken like seriously around two years ago, three years ago. I was, uh, I played online mostly. And I started with Nina, but she was really difficult, so I just switched to Anna because it seemed like the logical choice. And um, let's see, I met this guy named Jugo Sama, and he also plays Anna. And I met him online, I trolled him, and I found out that he lived like 30 minutes away. So he was in the competitive scene, so that helped me get there. And I've been, that was around two years ago or a year ago, so that's pretty much how it all started. Wow, so I, I have to say you're the first, uh, the first online warrior that we uh that we've well had. i transferred to offline pretty pretty fast mm -hmm. so but some online tactics actually still work offline so that's fun to use and abuse because uh, nice. I, I think it's because not many people know anna that i can get away with a lot of stuff so that's helpful in tournament yeah the last time uh, that i really ever had uh any anna um practice or competition there was um there's a player who he was originally from california then he moved out to iowa for a little bit um for school and then moved back out to uh, California. Um, and he, he is actually a Huarong player, but, uh, then he switched to Anna in DR. And then, uh, unfortunately he moved before T6 came out, but that was like the real last time that I had any like hardcore Anna experience. Um, there's a, a guy who sort of plays Anna in Wisconsin. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's not like a huge Tekken guy or anything. So I haven't really seen a, a lot of Anna uh, around the States. So out, outside of Virginia, can I guess uh, fill me in on my ignorance? <laughs> Are there any uh, um, like big Anna players that you know of? In, in the United States? Uh, well, um, anywhere, I guess. Uh, I mean, I, you're always going to find players of every character in like Korea and stuff, but that's just because they're yeah, like, cracked uh, out. In California, there's 200 yen, but ah, yes. he said. But I don't think he really plays Tekken 6 BR, because Anna's not that, like, I guess he couldn't handle all the nerfs, so he stopped playing, mm -hmm. I think. And uh, he claims to be the best Anna in the United States, but I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to call him out right now. And uh, also, there's um, this guy named uh, Waylon, or Sword of Dios, and he's from Virginia. He's, like, 30 minutes away. He's really good. But he also plays Lily. And... Let's see. There's Yukon, and he's from Japan, and he's probably one of the best Annas, top three. And um, there's another, there's two other Annas. I don't know their names because it's in Japanese, and I can't read Japanese, but they're like the best Annas I've ever seen. And then there's 200 won in Korea, and he's pretty good, like very uh, execution consistent, but he doesn't win much these days. Like, he used to win a lot in DR. And Is he uh, still playing Anna in Tag 2? Yeah, he's playing Anna and JC, and 
he played against uh, Help Me's Mokujin, and he lost a lot. I don't know why he's losing. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. It's just crazy. That's weird, somebody playing a Mokujin. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. That's like straight out of the tech and tag days <laughs> when people would actually like put time in with Mokujin. Well, if I could, like, if I had the, like, the... Uh, the drive to learn Mokujin, I would want to have like an Anna Anna team. That would be really fun. <laughs> yeah, that's always but, the hope, I guess. Get double characters of the one you know. So I think that's about it for all the Anna players that are like the main Anna. There's a couple that don't main her but use her. Uh, like, I don't remember his name. He's a Kuma player from Atlanta. Uh, I forgot his name. He plays Anna a little bit. Uh, do you know who I'm talking about? Ah, uh, God. I, I do. Um,. Damn it! You know what? I actually might have have it written down here somewhere because I know that you have. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. I, I I think he like I heard he o- almost double OCV'd Crow Core and someone else. I don't know. I remember reading it like a second ago. Mm-hmm. I forgot his name. Well, because I know that there's a. Uh, oh my fucking god! I cannot believe I'm blanking out right now. Like I'm, I must be really tired or something because there was a. Uh, um, uh, oh, you know what? I have his name somewhere. Hold on. Clint. Yeah. Clint, yeah, he plays. I was like, oh, God, I know who the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> just like, uh, oh, there's also an online Anna player named uh, Seeing Red. He's supposed to be really, really good, but he's very online tactics oriented. Like, he'll do down forward two, but it's negative 10 on block. But because it's online, he'll, like, do instant wall standing two, and he'll, like, catch you for no reason. Yeah, that's always but the problem with the. Uh, online yeah. punishing is such a so. huge thing in tech and when you can't do it <laughs> i think that's it for all that is though for sure there aren't that many cool. yeah i know clint uh god he's been bouncing around a little bit for t6 because i know he plays zafina as well uh, yeah i saw him i i haven't played him but i saw him at final round when i went it's been a I man it's been so long since i've seen clint the last time i saw him uh i want to say was evo 2007 maybe it's it's been forever it's definitely been a few years so yeah. uh is, yeah it was in the 5.0 day so i think it was 2007 maybe 2008 in any case so yeah uh well it sounds like there's kind of a bunch of closet anna players out there for like... closet. well that is not a misnomer because i think like the demographic for that goes to closeted people or people who are open with that <laughs> like you know what I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. okay, well, with uh, with that kind of out of the way, I guess, you know, everybody wants their strats, so we might as well just kind of jump right in. Um, so I, I kind of mentioned it before, you know, I haven't really studied Anna or anything like that uh, until or since uh, back in the DR days. And uh, the only real experience I've had in BR, um, we kind of had this little compilation did I, with a, I uh, did with a few other players I want to say like a year and a half or so ago where we kind of did a hodgepodge of every character and kind of created a uh, quick uh, strengths and weaknesses sort of thing. So that's the last time I really did anything with her. And uh, I remember that she had um, a little bit of a, a tracking issue, but that's really like the yeah. only thing that I can remember about her. <laughs> so uh, yeah, she doesn't track very well to her right yeah. or her left. I saw, I saw, I saw it right against her. Because it's her weakness. Yeah, because I, I, the only thing that I remember, this is like a year and a half ago. I was at a tournament. I want to say it was, uh, um, it was something in Chicago, and a buddy of mine and I drove there, and he was, uh, he's a Yoshi player, and he was up against an Anna, and this was right after we did that list, and right before he started playing, I just whispered in his ear, "Size so right," and then, like <laughs> right, the very first round, like the dude just started attacking, and he was at at her back. I was like, "Yep, I'm boss. What's up?" So, <laughs> so I guess uh, aside from the tracking issue, um, you know, you're going to be the resident uh, Anna expert, so kind of tell us, you know, where to start. Like, what are her weaknesses and and uh, and her strengths and how would you approach her? Yeah, uh, when against when I fight against Anna, I just usually wait for them to do something stupid or unsafe, and then I just uh, react to that. Like if I see up forward one three three plus four, I'll either interrupt it or just sidewalk right and get like because against Anna, uh, when you're using Anna um, against someone's back, you can do down forward three 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 one, and that'll guarantee a forward forward three or a launch afterward or a grab afterwards, even a back turn grab. Hmm. So uh, that's helpful, like, if you're able to space properly. But um, what else do I do against Anna? Uh, 
since I use Anna, like I use her, my own strategies like against them. I don't know how it makes sense, but huh. Well, okay. Well, know. let's start with the um, <laughs> uh, playing with her, and then we'll, then we'll kind of break down her okay. weaknesses. So, so playing yeah, with so her. Playing with I her. Like- so obviously, you want to focus on her strengths and kind of get away from her weaknesses. So. Uh, I mean, we already addressed, uh, you know, the tracking issue. So if you have somebody who's tracking or, you know, trying to sidestep a lot against you, what sorts of things would you do to uh, counter that? Uh, QCF4 is really good. The Crouch Dash 4, that's really good because it tracks well. And it's, uh, it's it might, uh, it says like negative 11, I think, but the pushback makes it really safe. So you can't punish it. And people try to jab after and you can get a, you, since they're whiffing, you can do a full crouch, uh, down forward two or while standing two to punish them, or even if they uh, try to do a move that like has farther range, you can sidewalk it. Because uh, so that's a good strategy that I use. Like uh, what else does she have? She has back four. That's her tracking move. It's twenty frames. It's negative nine on block. A uh, wall splats on counter hit and knocks down on counter hit. It's safe, so that's good. And she has uh, forward forward two. That's probably one of her best moves. It's plus five on block, and uh, it tracks really well, but you can sidestep it, I've seen it happen, and on hit, you can get a free down forward four, and you can dash in for a free full crouch mix up, or you can do it, uh, whatever setup you want, because there are a lot of setups with Anna. I think that's her strongest point, is her Okazemi. Um, let's see, what else does she have? Back two, that tracks, but it's not safe, and the second hit is high, back two two. And that's not good, but she has it. It's instant 15, so it's her 15 frame punisher. So okay, so then uh, you mentioned Oki, so let's let's talk Oki a little bit now. Uh, for, before we actually get into the Oki, uh, I am curious it, when you're playing as Anna. You know, you already mentioned the full crouch mix-ups, and, and that's kind of been her thing for a while now. Um, are you trying to knock down and then go into Oki, or are you trying to do? Uh, launches and then off of your combo go into Oki from that. I mean, I imagine you can do both, but just kind of as a general strategy, are you just trying to land knockdowns or launches? Well, usually I go for launchers because the only Oki that she gets uh, from knockdowns would be forward forward too. Everything else isn't really good Oki. So her Oki comes off of her combos, not just regular knockdowns? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so then let's talk launchers then. You mentioned, um, uh, what did you mention? Down, uh, <laughs> I can't even remember. Uh, down forward two? No, I don't think you said that. Down forward two, yeah, yeah. Down forward two. Negative 10 on block, or negative 11, one of the two. But I just know it's unsafe, and it's pretty good because it launches all the time if it hits. Uh, like, And it's instant 16, though, so it's not that great. Does she have a 15-frame launcher, or is it just down? Supposedly, you're able to hit forward 4-3 forward, at instant 15, but I don't think so. That's what Galen says. I don't think so, because I've never seen it happen, ever. Oh, wow. That, that's weird, because it, oh. uh, it lists it as 16, um, so I'm wondering if the uh, if it's instant 15, or not instant 15, but if it's uh, 15 frames, and the extra forward makes it instant 16. I'm wondering if maybe that's what the... Well, I do know that the avoiding the puddle frame data is wrong in a couple areas for Anna. Oh, good. Okay. So, Fill us in on that. What What is it wrong? Um, CG, uh, what is it? Cat stance or chaos judgment stance, whatever you want to call it. CGM1 is, it says it's negative 12 on block, but it's completely safe. And that's nice. Is it and like so, legitimately safe or is it like pushback safe? No, it's legitimately safe. Like, you try to jab me, and I'll duck you and do a full crouch down forward two, and you get punished for trying to hurt me. Okay. So, so it's really safe. Um, what else? I don't know. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll probably uh, run into it, and then you can always correct. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, so okay, um, so we got we mentioned the down forward two. Um, then she has forward forward three. That's a good launcher, because it kind of tracks well to her weak side, I think. Not certain, but I'm pretty sure it does. And... It can crush lows because it's like a sort of a hot kick. Uh, when you punish it, like you have to be, you have to like press the buttons as soon as possible because like as soon as she's uh, standing again, it recovers really fast. Uh, so, kind of the the whole 
Nina thing, like one of one of my biggest pet peeves with uh with Nina and why I think she's she's bullshit is uh <laughs> she has a lot of moves that are quote unquote punishable where they're you know in the negative ten to twelve range, but both her and the other character recover so fast that it's it's not like other moves that are negative ten to twelve because it's really hard to recognize the move <laughs> and it's like yeah. the block stun is like instant it's like even though it's technically punishable you have to recognize it immediately so yeah it's like you have to buffer the the one one two or whatever yeah. you want to punish it with yep. uh what else uh then she has forward forward four that's um it doesn't track well but you can use it with oki and it's like it guarantees a launch and it's a mid and it's zero on block so that's nice because a launcher so I, I know and that that goes into her stance, right? It can if you hold uh, back. Is it good to do that or not? I've never done that because I it sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. It sounds like one. It's negative nine if you go into stance. Maybe if you mix it up, like if they're not expecting it, you can do it. Does it lead uh, to like any better juggle or anything if it hits? Uh, if it hits, you get no juggle at all. Oh wow! So it's just like practically useless. To go into. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. To know. Then she has uh probably her best launcher is sidestep one plus two, cause it's a uh, it's an evasive move cause you're going it from sidestep. It's only negative four on block and uh you it, it juggles and it high crushes too, so that's nice. So uh she still has elbow right? Does yeah QCF does, one that's definitely one of her best moves. Does it not on, launch anymore? It launches on counter. Oh hit. okay. Uh, okay so no. And it's a really good move. You can just throw it out there to bait out punishes because it recovers so fast. Yeah, because I know uh, it, it's it's worked like this uh, for a long time, but it's it is punishable. But it's like it has pushback and it recovers so fast. And it's just like uh, QCF one or QCF two. QCF one is plus one on block. That elbow. Oh, is it elbow? Oh, I I always thought it was a uh, negative, but um, she has two elbows. She one of them is minus ten. And that gives a, a a stun, a breakable stun, but uh, mm. it's it's only negative ten on block. I use it against Oscar because it's only negative yeah, ten. Yeah, so she can. It's an elbow, and it wall splats, which is nice, and it tracks to her weak side. And uh, let's see, what else does she have? Down three two is negative fifteen. Uh, instant high crush or crush is highest, and um. It's good. Counter hit launcher is really unsafe. In second tag two, it's only negative thirteen, so I'm gonna abuse that a lot. So okay, what is it in T six? It's I'm guessing it's negative fifteen. Oh, okay, so it's no longer launch punch. Yeah, not anymore. Um, she has a uh, full crouch forward one, and that's uh, negative fourteen. But if you distance it right, it'll become uh, completely safe because of pushback, mm -hmm. like uh, completely unpunishable. But it's hard to do. And she has wall standing 2, instant 19, and it's negative 13 on block. But, uh, so you like, for my plan with the, uh, her full crouch game is like, you use the moves that your opponent can't punish as well as other moves. Because she has three wall standing, or three full crouch moves that are mid wall standing 2, full crouch forward 1, and full crouch forward 2. And certain characters can punish it better than others. So. It's good to know, like, the matchup. Gotcha. Is that true for everything, or just her full crouch? Did... Um, I haven't really looked at everything, but mostly, uh, let's see. I like to do a down 4-1 and sidewalks my opponent's weak side, which is really funny, because they try to punish her, and it'll just, like, whiff. But if you're really fast, you can actually punish her for it. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit, uh, although it sounds like <laughs> you probably want to be a little... Uh cautious just uh throwing them well out. i've done it against uh fighting gm and poke chop and i got to their back oh nice so it's very and it's only good against people who don't know how to fight anna which is practically everyone so yeah that's that's true i think we mentioned it um well i mentioned it many times on the podcast but character matchups are are well not just matchups but character knowledge is just huge not not just in tekken but just in fighting games in general and if you don't know the character, even if they're just completely ass, they're still going to roll you for just because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, that is very true. Uh, oh, up forward one, three, three plus four. That's a, you can hit, uh, it's a counter hit uh, launcher. 
uh, you can confirm the up forward one and complete the string. And you can actually do it like if your controller is on vibrate and you can feel like the heavier vibration, you can confirm it that way. Or you can just do it by looking at it. Oh, wow, that's goofy. Um, I've never heard anybody uh, <laughs> suggest reading the vibrations of your <laughs> your controller. Yeah, you can actually, like, if you put your controller next to your ear, you can actually hear the vibrations if it's counter hit. Wow, does it give no vibration if it's not? Um, if it, It'll give, like, a very weak vibration if it's not counter hit. Wow, that, that's and, a new one. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah, I was experimenting with that in practice mode. It's very fun. That that's hilarious. Yeah, because I've heard like um, uh, like confirming sound uh based on like uh, your opponent's presses because you know there's so many stick players out there, and uh, I actually I've heard through the grapevine. I've never actually asked him, but I know that like uh, Justin Wong, for instance, he says that he uh he breaks things or guesses things based on what he hears. The stick player doing so like he knows a grab is coming because he hears them mash the the two <laughs> buttons at the same time but uh that's funny i'm gonna i'm gonna have to check that out fucking vibration that's hilarious okay so anyway uh, uh any more launchers of note uh well if you block the first part of up forward one and get hit by the, the second hit on counter hit it'll launch you uh she's actually a lot of launchers Let's see, what else does she have that launches? Uh, down back 1-4 uh, launches on counter hit. It's negative 17. And then she has down back 1-1, one, one, which is all, uh, only launches if the second part hits on counter hit. And that's uh, negative 17. One's a high and one's a low. Or one's a mid, one's a low. And uh, what else does she have that launches? 3-3-2 uh, three, three, launches. It looks like down 3-2 because there's another hit. And... It's only negative 10, so people will try to punish it with down 4 2 because it looks the same. Yeah, I've actually uh, I've run into that um, uh, problem, not just with Anna, but with uh, with Nina as well. Because um, certain strings have like the same looking ending, like like the moon yeah. 3 3 2. And you think that it's, you know, one is launch punishable, the other one isn't. So. That- she has a down 4 3 2 1 4. And that launches only if the the uh, the third hit hits on counter hit. The other hit will become guaranteed. But uh, they're, they're all high, except for the first hit. So you can just duck and wait for it. But uh, people will try to um, interrupt the down four... Or they will try to duck the down four, three, two, and wall standing four to punish. But if you do it too early, they'll get counter hit. So that's useful. What else does she have? That count- uh, down back down back three. It's really slow, like negative, like instant 27 frame, and uh, I'm stuttering, anyways, <laughs> instant 27, and it launches on normal hit, it's a big low sweep, mm. and it's, I've hit GM with it, so, even though it's like a big low sweep, and they say not to use it, just remember that in tournament, anything goes, really. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, absolutely, we've said it a ton on this podcast, if, test your opponent, you know, I mean, make them prove to you that they can do it. So, I guess if you know they block it the first time, you probably don't want to use it. But you know, if it if it can nail, but it high it, uh, high crushes, right? It does, but the high crush window is like very small, so it's not really worth it. Like it's not like Lily's by any means. Gotcha. Uh, her best low launcher is full crouch down four too because it's unseeable. I abuse that. Like on wake up, I'll do it. Is that uh, is that- that's not a counter hit launcher? Right? It's just a no, straight-up launcher? Uh, yeah, straight-up launcher. Oh. Let's see what other launcher. She has sidestep, too. That launches on counter hit. And I think that's it. She's all the launchers. So uh, kind of dumb it down for us uh, simpletons. Which uh, which ones would you are you mostly focused on? Or do you actually try to mix all of them in? Oh, I forgot about uh, uh, four. Just magic four. Oh, yeah. Of course. Very helpful. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. If you have a magic four, you guys. I use... I use down forward two, four, and sidestep two. Those are her main launchers, other than her uh, full crouch launchers. Because uh, you can actually abuse sidestep one plus two. Like, people will try to jab you after it, but because it's only negative four, you can sidestep their jab and just do it again. And people just don't know that you're supposed to backdash because it doesn't have very good range. And it high crushes too. So even if people try to throw out uh, a tracking move to stop you, it'll high crush very well. All right. So uh, 
okay, so it sounds like we've kind of wrapped up uh, the launchers a little bit. So now that you've uh, – let's kind of go to the next step. Now that you've launched your opponent in the air, what, what do you do from there? Uh, then you follow it up with a, either a wall carry, obviously, or uh, if you want to – if you're like at an open stage with no walls – You'll do a down forward, a down forward one, down forward three, two, sidestep three, bound, and then I like to do sidestep three again and spike them, and then I'll get an okie setup. Like uh, I'll do that, and then I'll do down back one, and if they roll back or roll forward or try to get up, uh, well if they roll back or roll forward, it'll bind them again because that's a bound move, and then I'll get a reset. If they stand straight up and try to block or block low. Uh, the crouching, it'll hit them because it's a mid, and I can get a full crouch mix up because out of down back one, y you can go into full crouch. It's the option select. So there's like many levels of this. And if they side roll and try to stand up, down four one will pick them up after the down back one whiffs. And if they uh, side roll really fast, I don't know, it's really weird. If they side roll as fast as possible, the down back one will hit them and it'll, it'll like send them back a little bit, but it does more damage than her generic juggle. And so most of my game revolves around uh, getting them into the air and making sure they never get up because then I won't have to deal with their offense. <laughs> Fair enough. So it kind of sounded from that, from what you just listed, like down back one kind of takes care of everything. Like no matter how, you, uh, there's like no real safe way to move around it. Uh, yeah, you're right. There, You can stay down because it doesn't hit grounded. Ah, uh, okay. But that's when you can uh, you can step on them with down three plus four, and make them squirm, which is fun. <laughs> is uh is that her best uh, grounded attack? Is the stomp? Or um, only uh well she has down back three. If you're sure they're gonna stay down, but if they block it, then that's gonna hurt. And uh, off axis full crouch forward two hits them grounded, and that's probably her best one. Uh, what else does she have? As far as Oki, she also has the generic down 1 plus 2 unblockable tech trap. And that's if you tech her, right? Yeah, if you tech, but uh, you can sidewalk it at the wall to her weak side. So I don't really use that much because I think it's kind of scrubby. Like, everyone does that, <laughs> all the animal players. Fair, fair enough. That's true. But, you know, it's one of the, if you can uh, scrub out some unblockables, you know, it's tons of damage. So. Yeah, yes. Okay, so... Uh, I mean, that sounds like a pretty simple Oki game, like pretty much down back one <laughs> to man. That's that's it. <laughs> and then you you react to how to what they do. That's the best part. It's like it's truly like an option select. Mm. Nice. I think if if my definition of option select is right, I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. I mean, there's kind of different levels of option select. You know, mo most people think that. Uh, I, I would say probably your standard definition of option select is, you know, one thing taking care of a bunch of different options. But uh, yeah, I, it pretty much the term applies for anything where where you can scrub out multiple scenarios. <laughs> Just oh, you. That reminds me, uh, if your down back one miss misses and they uh, and you do down four one and they try and they just wait for that and people will like to do a get up kick right. And you can cancel the down 4 1 into sidewalk and make the get up kick with. So it's like playing on your opponent's instincts to punish you. And I've gotten that off a lot. Oh, nice. Okay, so let's, uh, so that's a uh, open space. So let's, let's talk the wall then. Well, are you still doing your sidestep three and then that at the wall, or is there a different pressure? At the wall, I do, uh, if, uh, I bound them at the wall, I'll do down four, three, two, down back one, and, uh, if they try to roll back or stand up, I'll do wall standing three back, and that'll hit them, and it'll guarantee a four, two plus three. But uh, people sometimes will stay down and they'll do like a wake up three, seeing that I whiffed. And since I go into cat stance, it auto parries lows. So that means if they do a wake up three, it'll launch them at the wall. Mm. And I stole that from a Japanese player. Uh, what else? Then she has. Uh, if people are just staying down, you can do. Uh, down back, uh, the same setup, down back one, and do, and do full crouch forward two, because that hits grounded at the wall, and that's really damaging, especially in rage. And, um, what else? She has a lot of setups, so it's kind of hard to memorize them all. Okay, see, well, you know, this. that's, I mean, that's why we're chatting her, so I guess just kind of, uh, walk us through all the setups then, like, what, um, 
what would you normally use? And then, uh, I mean, if you want to go through all of them, you're, you're more than welcome to, but, uh, you know, I'm sure most people are going to want to know the, <laughs> the stuff that works, works the most and is just okay. best. But uh, yeah, pretty, I mean, you're the Anna player, so you, I, you so, tell us what to do. <laughs> uh, the down one plus two unblockable. That's good. I think, well, I don't like doing it, but it is good. Cause I've hidden people with it. Like, uh, I hit poke shop with it at final round. He tried to do an unblockable on me, and I said, "And you don't set up, Mr. Taxi. Mr. Taxi sets you up." So <laughs> I like that. That's hilarious. Okay, so you got the unblockable. So what? What else she got? Uh, at the wall, uh, she can do down back three plus four three, and uh, if they tech, you can do an up forward neutral four, and it'll cross over and uh, hit them back turned, and that's good because not many people expect that. Uh, what else? She has, uh, hmm. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I mean, if the, if those are the only, like, really good ones at the wall, you, like I said, you don't have to... Those are the, main, the ones that I mainly use. Oh, sh- I can do a forward, forward, three, four, three, and then do the just frame unblockable, and that'll kill you. Like, if it hits you, you're guaranteed to die. Wow. So it's, it's good to throw out there sometimes. Oh, well, Yeah. I would say so. <laughs> Death combos are yeah. pretty, uh, pretty scary. Uh, what else does she have? Uh, that's pretty much it for the wall. I think she doesn't have many wall options except for uh, her generic wall combo and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's okay. I mean, you just listed a fucking death combo, so I would say that her wall options are are okay, even if they're limited. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have hit the uh, the just frame unblockable in tournament on stream, which is fun. Well, yeah. Shout out, shout out to the KPC for getting hit by that. Oh, ouch! <laughs> I can't believe we just called him out like that. Oh, that's funny. Wow. Okay. So, uh, okay, so that's it for the wall. Um, so it sounded like we kind of covered the. Um, the open area, Oki, was there anything else that you want to add to that, or did it, would that pretty much cover uh, After scaring people with the generic down 1 plus 2 unblockable, I like to do a down back 1 plus 2, and I'll cancel it, and they think that they can do like a get-up kick, but that won't work. I'll just do the unblockable again, and if they get hit by that, they die. So, it's like a feign unblockable into another unblockable. That's pretty silly. <laughs> Alright. But I stole that from, uh, an online player named Seeing Red. Hey, stealing setups is very funny. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say uh, I am definitely not above stealing strategies. Uh, in fact, I mean, at this point in my career, I'm doing so many other things that I I don't have time to sit there for and develop my own strategies anymore. <laughs> so uh, I I'm completely okay with uh, with stealing strategies. You know, if it's good, use it. You know, so. Um, off of forward forward two, she gets okay. She can do a. Uh, Court, uh, court, crouch dash one plus two, and if they tech, they tech into a, a chain grab. They can break that obviously, but if they stand straight up, it'll turn into a back throw. And uh, if they stay down and try to do a get up kick, you can sidestep right and do back three, and it'll. Uh, if they do either get up kick, the back three will make both of them whiff, and you can do up forward four to launch them for it. So it's fun. <laughs> and back back three is how you get into the stance, right? It's not an actual. Yeah. It's like the stance makes the game sort of like makes her hitbox kind of like invisible for a second. So that, it's kind of cheating. I don't know. I glitched the game in my yeah, setup. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of goofy. Um, definitely not the first time that I've ever seen a move, you know, uh, have some goofy properties like that. But uh, yeah, it's still silly <laughs> in either case. Okay, so any other noteworthy Oki traps or anything like that? I don't think so. Uh, that's pretty much it. If there's any more, you'll see them in the Oki video that I'm making. <laughs> Shout outs to your Oki video. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So one question uh, that I, it's kind of on my mind. I mean, it sounds, I think you sort of already answered it, but, uh, the full life death combo aside, how I take it, her damage, her juggle damage is pretty, pretty good. Even with, even if her, her Oki options don't hit. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. You usually do around uh, Half-Life, except unless you're doing the full crouch down forward too, that'll be around 40%, but otherwise it'll usually be around 50% life if you get to the wall. Gotcha. 
and then obviously Oki can always add to that. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you you also mentioned um, Wall Carry uh, just briefly, but um, is her wall? How is her wall carry? Is it average or is it pretty good? Or her wall carry is uh, really easy. It does uh, decent damage. It's basically um, up forward one three three plus four. And it like it car- It's pretty much gonna carry you from s- uh, wall to wall, unless it's like a really big stage, and it's really good. Gotcha. Uh, is it easier? Well, I mean, I guess a three string, and three hit string is pretty pretty fucking easy. But uh, uh, is it like? Are we talking like Bruce easy? Like three two three four two two or whatever the fuck it is, and just that? Like freaking- when I when I use the the, the move. I don't even think about what the move that I'm pressing. I still spam up forward one, and I match on three, three plus four, three plus four over and over again. And that's how easy it is. Wow. And does it carry as far as, like, say, Bruce? Or does it um, not quite as far? Uh, let's see. With her whole juggle, it'll probably... It'll almost carry as far. It carries pretty far for the amount of effort it requires. Oh, but for sure. Bruce carries pretty far, though, so it's not like... Uh, <laughs> that's very true it's not like up to par okay so we're kind of uh talking you know we talked oki uh and it sounds like that's a pretty big part of her game um does she get good oki off of her grabs or um no yeah. she gets zero off oki off of all of her grabs except for a down forward down forward one which is uh, most people uh, see that. Her, the one with the elbow i don't yeah. know have you seen it yeah yeah i have i, I would imagine most people um can probably break that on reaction because uh, I think she's had that for quite a while. Uh, yeah. So n- nothing new. And I think that's her, her only 1 plus 2 break, right? Uh, she has up forward 1 plus 2. Ah, yes, the throw. Across. There, yeah, that wall d- or... Does she have any um, like running setups or anything with that, or does it recover too slow? Um, it recovers too slow, but if people run at you, which people like to do, and you can you can do up forward 1, 3 plus 4, and it'll hit them counter hit, and you get a juggle off that. What, uh, that doesn't, because you can tech roll that, that doesn't do, like, a ton of damage, right? I think it does, like, pretty subpar, like... Yeah, it does subpar damage if they tech it, but at the wall, it's, uh, it is a lot. Is it, uh, is it the same as Nina's, where, uh, your opponent gets free get-up kick? Yeah, it's the same. Is, uh, is that good, or do you think that's good or bad for the Anna player? Because I know with, like, Nina, um, it leaves you at such a range where the get-up kick won't knock you down. So uh, yeah. it actually kind of works well for her. Yeah, it works well in my favor because when they do the get up kick, it, they'll be at negative frames, and I can use that to my advantage. Yep, that, that's exactly uh, what I was talking about. So okay, so same same sort of situation as Nina. You probably just want to get up and and get the hell out of yeah. the wall. But okay, so uh, so that kind of sucks. That <laughs> just the one grab that uh, that gives you a really good okey. Um, oh, let's see. Talk damage. Uh, what? How is uh? You know, we're talking launchers, so let's kind of veer off into just a regular pressure game. Um, is I mean, does she have good pressure or? She's. Uh, I think she does. She has a uh, forward four two for pressure since it's only uh it's plus five on block and it tracks, and uh, it's a high. And then she has down forward one two. That's her uh poke. And it's very good. It's because it jails, and that's amazing. Because it's like stupid good that when it does, it's a, uh, it does twenty seven damage. It's only negative three on block. It's plus two on hit and plus nine on counter hit. Then she has down forward four. It's launch punishable on block, but no one's really gonna block it because it's unstable. And that's plus four on hit. And let's see. Well, I know like and one of the biggest fears uh, aside. I mean. <clears throat> she has, you know, just standard 10 frame jabs, but uh, she has the magic four. So a lot like Nina, I know it's it's kind of yeah. dangerous just to run up on her and start doing stuff. But yeah, her magic four combo isn't as damaging as Nina's, obviously, but it it's there and it's good since it does give Oki, which is my uh, that's where my gameplay comes from. Is I like focus on Oki, but most Anna's will focus on uh poking your opponent to death which i'm practicing on <laughs> okay so run us through that like what uh what are her scary uh pokes i would imagine she still has uh the fucking ankle clipper uh what is it down yeah. down back four or whatever down, four, down forward four down forward four yeah yes. 
That's uh, that's good. Except it's launch punishable. That's the only thing that's bad about it. But but well, like you mentioned, it. you know, you can't see it. So yeah. So just don't get obvious with it. And um, then she has uh, down back one. That's really good for poking too, because you can go straight into your full crouch from it, or you can uh, like bait out, because people will think you're going to full crouch, and they'll just try to interrupt you, and you can just bait that out and sidewalk and punish them for it. Uh, Let's see, for let's side step one plus two, very good. Just very, very good. I can't stress enough how good that move is. Uh, what else does she have? Uh, one, two, very jabs, those are nice. Uh, to do, uh, down three is a good low poke. It's negative 14 on block, but uh, down three, two is the launcher, so people won't really punish it. And you can go into a full crouch from down three, and you can get a mix-up there. But all of her uh, full crouch mix-ups are just completely sidewalkable, but not many people want to sidewalk her. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why either. That would be like my main thing if I were playing against uh, Anna. Um, quick question I was going to ask her jab. I, I know that uh, she has dra- jab strings, or like options after the one, two. Are any of them yeah. good? Um, no. no. They're all bad. (laughs) I was just curious if I should be worried about, like, if I were to go up against an Anna, if I should be worried about anything coming out after the 1-2? No. You, no. People will do, uh, let's see, 1-2 and then down four, down four, one, but you can just break that. And her main punisher is 2-3, because it's, uh, 30 damage for 10 frames. Pretty good. And then, I'll just go into Punishers right now, since I'm talking about them. Yeah, absolutely. For 11 frames, she has nothing. For 12 frames, she has nothing. For 13 frames, she has down forward 1-2, and that's good. Is that better than doing 2-3? It doesn't do more damage, but it gives more frame advantage. And uh, you can mix it up with down forward 1-2. Three and down four one two four and down four one two three back to go into stance, so it can give you like a sort of mix up. And uh, she ha- for fourteen frames. She has a couple options. She has forward two three, or she has forward two plus three, which will wall splat. And she has down forward three four, which also wall splats. So those are both good. For fifteen frames, she has back two two. And that'll turn your opponent around, like it'll flip them around, but nothing is guaranteed afterwards. So uh, it sounds like a, like a <laughs> shitty situation to be in. Yeah, it's like, I use it because like, no one expects to go straight into back turn from a move. So oh, yeah, it's not it's like a, fucking Caliber where apparently every single character has a quick back turn move. No, yeah. I don't play Caliber, though, but yeah. Yeah, for anybody out there who's pl- who plays Caliber, they know what I'm talking about. Like, everybody, for whatever reason, <laughs> like, every single fucking character has a quick uh, move from back turn that on counter hit leads to stupid damage. It's it's silly. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. you can also but, break uh, back grabs in that game. So. Back 2-2 two, two doesn't work on female characters because they can uh, interrupt it with 2. Like, it'll slap them back. And you can continue that on for as long as you want. That is so silly. <laughs> and then, uh, then she has, for 16 frames, she gets a launcher finally, down forward two. And that's pretty much her punishing game from standing. So how about while, uh, while standing? While standing, uh, pretty much at, uh, I go, basically I don't even bother with her while standing punishment because it's so bad. I just go straight for a full crouch mix-up every time. It's really bad, her while standing, uh. Like, she gets wall standing three back at 11 frames, and that's pretty much her only good thing. At 13 frames, it's wall standing one, two, and then 14 frames, it's practically nothing. So, anything past 14 frames, you go for a wall standing, or a full crouch down for two, or wall standing two. Because at 19 frames, she finally gets a launcher. And that, that would be the wall standing two. Yeah, actually, she gets up four, four at 18 frames, but. It's not even, like, yeah. what move is 18 for negative 18 that your opponent's going to do every single time? Yeah. Well, I imagine that, technically speaking, you could crouch cancel into, like, a down forward two. But, uh, I mean, that would be, like, terribly inconsistent. <laughs> I mean, you'd have yeah. to be so, like, executionally 
gifted. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Yeah. So. And if that were the case, why would you pick Anna? Anyways, you pick Machine. Yes, yeah, that's true. Okay, so uh, so it's pretty much full crouch mix up, mix up all day. Yeah. Um, okay, so what about uh, with Punishers? Like, what is like the best option? Uh, forward forward three is definitely her best with Punisher. It uh, it goes pretty far, and it's uh it's very good for with punishing. It gives you a launcher. I think that's about it. That's her only really good with Punisher that I would bother with. Forward forward two. If you're not sure, if it's gonna hit. Cause even if they block it, it's only, you get advantage. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay, so those are what I do at least. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, what? Uh, I know there are some characters that uh, it's almost better to like hunt for their ten frame punishers uh, when you, for whiff because because uh, their launchers are just kind of slow. But uh, is she the same way? Or are you always hunting for the four four three? Uh, I usually go for the four four three. Like I'll I'll just backdash until until I see something whiff and I'll four four three. Okay, and then you also uh, something I, w- I was going to ask about too uh, was just her range in general because uh, you know you you kind of mentioned this earlier and then again you just mentioned it with the four four three it, it goes a, a decent distance. Um, it kind of sounds like she has a little bit of a range problem. Uh, yeah, she it's uh, when you fight her up close it's well let's see her only move that'll go decently far that's good is forward forward three and QCF four and QCF one. Otherwise, uh, you can pretty much outspace her pretty easily at range two, and yeah, range one is where she's best because her pokes will actually hit you, because she's not uh, her arms don't go very far. Gotcha. Okay, so it so we wrapped up with like the um, uh, the poking game and everything in her range. Uh, one another thing I was going to ask about because uh, we mentioned Magic Four a little bit. Uh, obviously, Magic Four is probably the quintessential panic button. You know, get the hell out of my face. Um, because yeah. I'm gonna do lots of damage to you right now, but uh, does she have any other like really decent panic buttons, like moves that are just so good at crushing or so good at evading or anything like that? Um, she has sidestep one plus two, that's good at for panic button. And uh, if your opponent is just like really trying to get away with murder, like because I don't really know her wrong that well, and if I fight one and they're just stringing me up, I'm just gonna do down three two and hope I get counter hit. <laughs> It's not really a good idea, but I just do it because oh, it's instinct. Yeah, no, I. There's been many, many players who who do that, who as a panic button. So I definitely know what you mean. Uh, and then she has up forward one. I use that as a panic button because uh, it can beat magic four out for some reason. It might be range or something. I don't know. It just beats it out. Uh, so that's good to do up forward one and then hit confirm counter hit confirm it with the vibration. Yes, right? absolutely. <laughs> That's the only way to <laughs> counter hit confirm. That's the way to do it. You just put your controller on vibrate and just listen yeah, for it. Yeah, if I was a stick player, I would make sure I put some sort of vibrating thing in there. Exactly. <laughs> so I could confirm it. Oh, that's fucking And uh, what else? She had another panic button. I just forgot what it was. What was it? Um, What was it? Damn, I forgot. Huh. Well, that's okay. Maybe I'll remember it if we keep yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. We'll just keep thinking about it. Um. So the only other really part of her game uh, that I can think of that we we haven't really discussed, at least not in depth, is uh, her punishment and we uh, or her safety, I should say. Uh, and we talked about it a little bit because it kind of sounds like she's in the same boat as Nina, where a lot of her stuff is negative ten to say negative twelve or thirteen, and uh, but she recovers really quick, as does her opponent. So it's kind of hard to recognize that it's punishable. Um, I and I mean there's obviously going to be exceptions like down down four four and, and such, but um, it, is that mostly where it is, or like would you say like overall she's not safe, or maybe she's safe? overall she's not safe, very uh yeah not safe. She's high risk high reward. Also, I remember the panic button that I was going to talk oh, about. Absolutely, throw it out there. Um, if people are poking you down with mids and lows, and you just feel like there's going to be a low, I throw out cat stance. Because if it's mid, um, the chances are it's not going to be a launcher. And if it's a counter hit launcher, going into stance is a counter counter hit. So you're not going to get punished badly for it. And if it's a low, you get a free juggle. So that's good. I use that against uh, Jax a lot because they like to do down back one. Ah, uh, yes. Absolutely. Fucking down back one. Move is so annoying. So cast stance is very good low crush. 
So uh, that's a good panic button. All right. So overall, uh, she's not safe. <laughs> she's very high yeah, risk. Not safe. Very unsafe. Okay, but uh, it kind of sounded like uh, when you're describing your uh, your game that uh, you kind of stick to the more the safer options. So are you playing that high risk, high reward game or are you? I do to an extent, like her full couch game is obviously high risk, high reward, but uh, I try to focus it on the stuff that like my opponent probably doesn't know about so that I can abuse it against them. So it makes it safer because they just don't know. Gotcha. So you're trying to abuse that character knowledge. then, Right. Okay. So let's say that uh, you're going up against somebody who can just, I mean, they know Anna in and out. How, what what are you going to do? How, how do you approach that? I, I do uh, lots of forward, forward two, uh, down forward one twos, down forward fours, and then I just uh, try to outspace my opponent and turtle them, and then uh, hit, uh, count, hit, confirm, a four, one, three, three plus four, because that's probably really, really, really good. One of her best moves. And uh, pretty much I just try to focus on their weaknesses and then try to stay solid with my character okay, with uh, safer options, like back four. Stuff like that. Gotcha. All right. Well, I am. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm starting to run out of questions. Um, a- anything that you can think of that we we didn't brush on that uh, that we that we should. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Anna. Let's see. Because uh, as far as uh, you know, most of most of what we've been talking about is playing with her, and but uh, I mean, it seems like we we've, we've already. Uh, covered the stuff that you would probably need to know if you were playing against her like uh she has a little bit of a range issue um she has some tracking problems to her left uh not complete you know not the safest character in the world um but uh i i think that was it i think that at least that's what i got out of it was there anything like extra that you should know if you were playing against anna uh well a lot of anna players play very differently so it's like I focus on Oki, and some of them focus on like solid pokes, and some of them just like are very offensive because Anna has very good offense tools. So uh, it just try to adapt to your opponent. Obviously, against Anna, it's good to adapt against her if you know her. Gotcha. But uh, uh, let's see, down four one two four is pretty good because uh, even though the last is a high, people will try to interrupt you for some reason. I don't know. Uh, that's it. I don't know if there's anything That's okay. I mean, we, we that was a. I mean, we pumped out a lot of information. Uh, and she uh, is one of those characters that uh, she doesn't have a gigantic move list, even though she has a stance, or I, I guess uh, she has a couple stances, right? She has um, uh, the back three, and then uh, crouch dash is technically a stance. But um, I mean, even with those, I mean, her list isn't so gigantic. I mean, if you look at, if you just go through her move list. So much of it is uh, strings. Like if you were if yeah. you were to take out all of the, you know, every hit of every string, and then just include the starter move for every string, like it, it would literally cut it in half. So speaking speaking of strings, she does have a semi useful string. Uh, down forward three two one four, or I think that's it. Let me find it. Down forward three two one four two, and then. You can side, you can cancel it with a sidestep, and you'll be at plus one on block. The last three hits are high, but if you try to punish it like at the wrong time, you'll get interrupted, and so that makes it sort of safer. And then you can si- cancel it with sidestep one plus two, and that'll be a launch. You could do the low, and that'll also be a launch. But both are, or the low is pretty unsafe. Launch punishable. I think that's it. Gotcha. That, that's it. No other little uh, last bit, uh, last minute tidbits or anything from her. Um, let's see. Uh, no, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I always ask this question um, just because you know. The, I mean, there's. I know there's a lot of people who hate the tier list thing, and, and you know I've, I've said this many times, but I mean it's just something that's out there. And we actually, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, they just released. Uh, at least on the TZ homepage, um, a little picture of the Japanese tier list for oh, yeah, yeah, the tag two. So, so, uh, so what, where do you think she is in T six? Like 
it sounds like she would be pretty much run of the mill, like like mid, like right right in the middle of everybody. Yeah, uh, the Japanese have her listed as D, but I don't think that's the case. I think she's probably B, and she's only really improve uh, gotten improvements from second tag to second tag two to vanilla to unlimited. So really, she sh- I think she might be able to be higher up there because I think she's an underused character, like. Personally, I think that um, for Anna, she is she is really good. If your opponent will not, does not know how to get up, every character will become E tier against me because they don't know how to get up. <laughs> so S tier when I use her, and then E tier. Every other character is E tier against me. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> gotcha. Well, yeah, and there's a there's a lot of characters out there that can uh, uh, just destroy you if you don't know how to get up properly. I know Lee. Lee is one of those characters that um, he is. Uh, I mean, he's most people would consider him, you know, right in the middle of the pack. And people underestimate, like, Anna's ability to get a juggle, because she's probably one of the only characters with a true 50-50 mix-up, which is her full crotch mix-up. It's an unseeable low and a mid, so it's pretty easy to get a juggle with her, and then as long as I keep you in the air, you can't really do anything about it. And that's pretty much her game plan, for me at least. Nice. No, that's a, I mean, full crotch mix-ups. They've, uh, I, I remember back in the, uh, uh, the regular tag, you know, tag, tag and tag one. Yeah. That was ogres. I mean, ogres would just kill because of that shit and their legs, uh, especially true ogres arms. I mean, they're just so long. <laughs> so, uh, are you, uh, so I, I guess, uh, we'll kind of cap the, uh, Anna discussion at that, but, uh, for tag two, I mean, I can only imagine that you've been, you know, just like with the rest of us watching it and trying to get yeah. information so do you uh for first question uh, for you personally are you going to go with like the true ogre because he has those full crowd mix-ups like she does or uh, no i'm going with uh anna and june because uh june her counter is uh if you tag out you'll be at plus 17 but it's like a uh, fake advantage and nothing is guaranteed well, that sounds like a really good time to get a free full couch mix up to me. <laughs> That's very true. So, what uh, what is it with the the counter? Uh, you can tag. Uh, you can do her reversal, and you can tag out, and you'll be. And when Anna comes in, she'll be at plus seventeen. Oh, but nothing will be. I see. So you can't. Yeah, you can't get it down for two, but I can just crouch in your face, and you have to guess. Oh, I thought you meant uh, uh, pl- like just uh, if your opponent just regularly tagged out. Um. Wow, I didn't realize that, that you can tag out on your counter. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm. So I'm probably going to use June so I can abuse that. Oh, yeah. Until people chicken me, <laughs> then I'll be sad. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, ch- and I mean, expect it at high, high level play because um, we've kind of seen the absence of chickening uh, since tag one. But uh, I mean, now that uh, the Mishimas are all top tier again. Um, I mean, expect uh, people to figure out the um, the whole devil gin thing, and and a plus since a lot of people they'll uh, when they ta- when they come in from a raw tag they'll like do a parry or a counter, and I've seen like Qdon's he'll he'll always like chicken it like it seems like it's on reaction. Yeah, the the whole chickening thing. Uh, some people can. I I am not that gifted, unfortunately, but uh, like I have seen um, in a match. Uh, for Tekken Tag in a tournament match, uh, Unconquable, who's, I mean, he's doing his Blizzard thing or family thing, whatever. He doesn't really play a ton anymore. But uh, at his prime, he would uh, he did a uh, Twin Pistons with Devil, and the second one is the one that got countered, and that's the one that he chickened. And I, uh, the, my mind was blown at that moment. So he, uh, he chickened both, both moves. <laughs> I, I don't know why one would even want to do that or think about doing it, but I'm pretty sure he did it on reaction. At least that's what I like to believe. So, uh, <laughs> so it sounds, it, so it sounds like everything, uh, like the character Anna is getting better in tag two. So, uh, lots of excitement there. Uh, I was going to ask, cause you, you kind of brought it up. So at, you were at final round then have yes. you uh, gone to any other Tekken tournaments? I went, I got third at winter brawl. I lost to incognito and in fighting GM. And uh, I went to NEC. I did really bad <laughs> at NEC. It was really, really bad. It was like the worst tournament ever for me. I, I went two. I went two and out. And uh, I lost to RDM and Wayne Gamble. I always lose to Wayne Gamble. I don't really know why. Well, I mean, he's a he's an old schooler. He's a good player. So 
I mean, you can't yeah. be uh, too ashamed of that. Um, who was the other player? Uh, RDM. He uh, plays Asuka. He's from New Jersey. I had a money match with him at Winter Brawl. He's been playing a lot of Soul Calibur, so that's his excuse for losing oh. to me. It was a, we had a first to five, and the final score was 7-1. Uh, first to five? Yeah, and then we had, but for some reason we kept going, and it was 7-1. Oh. That was the final score. <laughs> That's where I was about to say, it's like you had a first to five, but you played eight matches, okay? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I just went to uh, Power Up, that was the last tournament that I went to, uh, and I was disappointed because I actually did better in Tekken than I thought I was going to, because uh, I haven't really played the game uh, competitively for a while, so... I was like, okay, I gotta do all this last minute shit, and I was fully. Ex- uh, no one from Virginia was going. What? There. I tried to make it up there to power up, but no one from Virginia was going. Which is, but well, there were only like what sixteen people. Yeah, there weren't. Right? A, there weren't a lot. I mean, there were a couple of uh, killers. I mean, you had Sluch, you had Fighting GM, um, but you had a uh, Christian or Corey. Yeah. I think that's his yeah. name. He's an online player. I used to play with yeah. him a lot. A lot. He's a. Uh, you know, I I gotta give that guy his props because it was his first tournament. And he did really well. And I think, and I don't think a lot of people understood that, like um, uh, people who weren't there and didn't watch the matches or anything. Because like Fighting GM won, okay, and and he won uh, handily. I'll give him that. I actually played him uh, in the bracket rounds. But uh, when he put the closest match that he played was against Christian, and uh, it went down. It was the last match. It was the third match, and it was uh, fi- it was the last round. They were both two two, and when it was done. GM was his hands were shaking, like he he had him on the ropes. Like his uh, Christian's, uh, I mean, his Deligen was it, uh, it was. He plays a lot of characters. Yeah. He played uh, Julia. Uh, his brother is actually really good too. He plays Ling Shao Yu. Yeah, because he he was so, solid. I mean, he he played a really really good tournament. So I gotta gotta give that guy his props. But uh, yeah, I was uh, disappointed only because I was fully expecting to do better in caliber than Tekken, and it didn't happen. <laughs> now I just I had a terrible showing in caliber, which did not make me happy. But it is what it is, you know. Every you're not going to have a good tournament every time you play. So, uh, so any uh, noteworthy like uh, matches when you played at uh, final round? Uh, somehow I just I beat Lil Majin. I don't know how I did. <laughs> it's crazy. Like uh, yeah. But uh, let's see. I lost to Poke Chop and I lost to Wayne Gamble at that tournament, and I beat Lil Majin. That's pretty good. I think beating Lil Majin means something, even though he hasn't been really playing Tekken all that much. And it was really late. Like, that tournament was, like, run nine hours late. Oh, wow. But I played lots of Tekken Tag 2 there, so that was fun. Yeah, I probably won't end up playing uh, Tag 2 again until uh, it actually comes out, because <laughs> I, I won't be at Evo. Uh, and then trying. Th- I thought it was going to be somewhere else, too, before that. Um, Are you going to go to uh, East Coast Throwdown? No. They might. I hope they have it. They have it. <laughs> no, unfortunately, the only tournament that I'll be able to make, at least big tournament that I'll be able to make um, in the next few months, at least b- before uh, Tag 2 comes out, is going to be um, UFGT. Uh, but, yeah, I don't have a lot of time or money to throw around traveling cross country this year. So <laughs> it's kind of how it's got <laughs> to be. But uh, are you going to head out to Evo this year? Um, No. They don't have Tekken, so... That's the only game I play. Ah, so you, don't, no. you don't play anything else. Then. I don't play any other game except for a Tekken. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's the reason I bought a PS3. So. You know what's funny? I don't have a PS3 anymore. Uh, the PS3 that I use right now is actually the girls. But uh, when PS when the PS3 first came out, I bought one. And then I eventually sold it because I looked at my collection of games. I was like, oh, all I have is Tekken. And then I was <laughs> like, I just spent $400 to play Tekken. I, uh, I think I should get some of my money back. I also, uh, speaking of tournaments that I've been to, I went to Ling Massacre's Island Invitational Tournament. I did pretty well, I think, I guess. There were, I got second there were place. eight players, right? Yeah, yeah, I got second place. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, I've been trying to get a hold of, or figure out how to get a hold of, um, uh, Justin? You, no, no, not Justin. Um, no, I can get a hold of him. Uh, the, uh, God, why can't I remember his name? The Oscar player that won. Uh, Drop. Yeah. Because uh, I wanted, because yeah. we haven't done Asuka yet, and uh, I wanted to get him on because uh, I know that a lot of people were interested in that uh, that Island Invitational. Uh, it was a really neat event. I thought it was j- just as an idea, even if it hadn't uh, gone past the initial uh, idea phase. You know, like I, I just thought it was a great, 
change pace. I guess. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and it, I kind of really, really wanted to get first place, <laughs> but I didn't. Well, in in either case, you know, shout out to Ling Masker for doing that. The yeah, computer. definitely shout outs. He helped me get my name out, kind of. Like, when I went to final round, it's like everyone knew me. It was really weird. It was really weird. <laughs> it was really weird. Uh, was, people were saying, hi, uh, Turk challenged me to a money match, but we never got around to it. Uh, so are you a big money match guy then? You you like to do them, or you just like, oh? Uh... Not really, because I'm kind of poor. Not, like, really poor, but I don't have that much money. But I guess I do it for fun. Like, if I know I'm going to win. <laughs> so that's why I accepted the Turk. Just kidding. Oh, wow. I accepted because I just wanted to play him. Gotcha. Yeah, I thought it's uh, I I've never really been a huge money match person. I I just like the experience. Um, and to be completely honest, I think that you play better when you're in a tournament atmosphere, not just a money match atmosphere. But uh, I know that there's a lot of players out there that I mean, it's you can't even play them unless it's for money. So I know, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> kind of lame, but it's the way it goes. Uh, well, cool. Yeah, nice uh, talking about the tournament thing with you because uh. I completely forgot that you had gone to, to final round. Um, so I, yeah, I got 17. Yeah. Which is pretty good for my first final round. Well, in final round, I, I got a decent amount of Tekken players. Um, yeah, they got 100-ish, yeah, give or take. Which was a surprise, at least to me, and I think to a lot of other people too, because I pretty much everyone figured Tekken was dead. <laughs> that there's like A lot of people from VA really thought uh, wanted me to get top 8, but I just... Couldn't do it. Wayne Gamble just keeps getting beat. Fucking, fucking Wayne Gamble, that, that fucking guy. Wayne Gamble. <laughs> he uh, he, I, he actually, I found him online, or he found me, and he was like, "I challenge you, Anna." I didn't know it was him because he had a different name, so it was like really weird for me. So I was like, "Okay," and we played, and we went back and forth. <laughs> Man, that character, Leo, such a bitch. <laughs> well, yeah, that's how you gotta do. It. Do you know Leo, or was it uh, one of those things where you just uh? I didn't. I don't really know Leo that well, but I know that I'm supposed to sidewalk the same direction against, that I do against Anna. So, but I was doing it like at the wrong time. Every single time, I would just get hit by something, and so I had to adapt. So, when I, if I see him again in tournament, it's going. It's well, going then down. Uh, before you do, uh, uh, go back and listen to the podcast with him on it, and get, get all the strats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get all this back. Uh, excellent. Well, uh, to kind of wrap up the uh, the podcast, then um, one thing that we always do at the end, uh, it's a little bit I like to call sound off. Um, and pretty much, I I want to know what makes you angry, and it doesn't have to be uh, it doesn't have to be gaming related, doesn't have to be techno related or anything like that. Just whatever comes to the top of your head that just really like turns your face red, makes your blood it, it increases your temperature, your body temp, you get all sweaty. Uh, just get your soapbox out and just blast something you know actually a lot of like tekken players they get like really angry and salty when they play tekken but i don't i'm not i'm just not like not an angry person like the closest thing that i got to anger was when i heard that 200 yen said he was the best anna player in the united states but i wasn't really angry i was just more like <laughs> this guy <laughs> it was so like he, he does I, I wonder if he really thinks that he's like the best anna player and he doesn't even play tekken 6 br so if I ever, I want to money match him. That's the only person that I actually want to money match. Oh, right there now. you go, two hundred so. yen. You just got called out. So everybody, yeah. spread the word. Let him know. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a money match. Two hundred yen. Two hundred yen. What is that? Two dollars. <laughs> yeah. Really oh, funny. That's uh, that's funny that you say that because yeah, lots, lots of players get get salty at Tekken, and I, I. Yeah, I know that. Um, there was an at a uh, winner brawl. There was like this thing with uh, Seiko. I don't know if you know him. Seiko and uh, Real Law. They like have this feud, and like Seiko beat Real Law, and he was like, "Suck my dick, nigga!" And then like it was crazy. Wow. So it was lots of yelling, and someone has it on camera, but I haven't found it on YouTube That's yet. That's a shame. So shout out to, <laughs> shout that. Out to but the anger I don't get <laughs> of certain players. Yeah. Right, right after that though. Um, I asked Real Law if he wanted to play, and he said no. Oh wow! <laughs> oh man, yeah. There's there's lots of salt. I I have to say that I uh, I am in that group as well that gets angry, but I get angry at myself. Like I don't yell at my opponent because I think they suck. It more has to do with me and my my shitty play. So I only I've only ever gotten like disappointed. I've never been angry. 
Man, that's funny. I, I, I did not hear about that, but I guess I, I wasn't really paying attention to the Tekken results for Winter Brawl, so something I should probably start doing. Uh, I was mostly – because I think Caliber had come out right before then, so – yeah, I think yeah, they, they definitely yeah. right before that. There were like there were nineteen people in in Winter for Ball. Tekken. So uh, yeah, for Tekken. Yeah, not a very big tournament. <laughs> but uh, I know UFGT um, last year. I want to say it was like thirteen or fourteen people that entered, and uh, Keith popped into the forum just the other day and uh, said that they already had twenty two and were still a couple weeks away. Or what three weeks? I think so. Yeah. That's- so, I mean, I don't expect it to be the 80 or 100 or whatever that was that final round, but if we can get at least third, a th- full 32-man bracket, I would probably shit myself. So, You know, uh, Virginia locals, they usually have around 30 That's people crazy. You guys are lucky that you, you have them. I mean, I expect Tekken players to come out of the woodwork once Tag 2 comes out, but like that's crazy that you guys get that many on a regular basis for T6 still. That's, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Count your lucky star. It's uh, it's because of a uh, VA Tekken Raid. Shout outs to them for sponsoring and getting everything uh, nice good story. to go. Well, uh, sir, that it's uh, been a pleasure. Lots of uh, Anna juice uh, that she just gave us. Um, that's pretty much uh, all I have. Any like last words or like shout outs or anything you want to do before we uh, call it quits? Uh, shout outs to Kent Toro. He's from Australia. He got a uh, second place in the Shadow Lou tournament or something with Anna. So, oh, nice. good job where, for that. Where is he from? I guess. Uh, Australia? Was Australia. it an Australia tournament? Or? Personally, yeah, it was uh, Melbourne. Personally, <laughs> I think I could take him. I don't know. Just from his matches. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't play on uh, stick. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe you should edit that out. Maybe you should edit uh, that no. out. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no, I'm not. Not doing it. Sorry. I don't edit. <laughs> Plus he's, not, plus, he's in Australia. Yeah. What's he going to do? Come kick your ass or something. <laughs> Fly all the way. Right. Plus, Anna player, so it's not very scary. If you play Anna, I pretty much consider you not straight. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. That's funny. Well, any any other anyone else that you want to shout out and then put on blast? <laughs> uh, 201. I'm... Well, no. I don't really want to call him out. I'll call him out <laughs> my, my combo video. Yes, which we can all expect yeah. uh, here shortly. When uh when is when are you planning on putting that up? As, as soon as possible. Is it uh on, on your YouTube channel or anything? It's gonna be on my friend's YouTube channel, and I'll just I'll spread it around like. Okay, cool. Yeah, Friday, as so. uh as soon as I put this up, uh, and everybody can listen to this, uh, be sure to post that up, the link or whatever to it, and uh, and we'll be sure to uh kind of spread the word and people can actually watch you play uh are there any like aside from the uh the island massacre uh which i to be completely honest i don't think um he put up vids yet has he he put up like half of them were there any of you on there there were two of me one of them was against the first uh i had two matches against tick or two sets against tick and he has the first set the one that i lost and then he has one against uh, Vargas the Sick, his Wang, and I beat his Wang. Ill. <laughs> uh, you, you're you're gonna have to go back and listen to uh, the Wang episode because it's nothing but Wang so jokes. So, uh, <laughs> so any uh, aside from that tournament, any other like videos out there where people can uh, scout you? Not too up uh, I have a match against Fighting GM. You can YouTube that, and uh, it's not like all of my matches that are online aren't really recent. So I've gotten better since uh, then, obviously. Gotcha. So don't like judge my skill based. <laughs> don't on judge as Anna until you've seen it in person. Uh, all right. Actually, I hate watching myself play Anna because it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, but somehow I win. So it doesn't really matter. That well, much I, that the W is all that matters, really. So it <laughs> doesn't matter right. how you get it or what people think you as long as you can win. So. Cool. Well, uh, uh, excellent. Um, he actually got quite a bit more than just the strategy. Uh, I kind of felt the last couple podcasts we've uh, been a little lacking in the uh, the extracurricular talk. So <laughs> glad that we can uh, kind of spread some words and uh, get, kind of put some people on blast because I love doing that. I'm not going to lie. I, lo- I love hearing people get called out. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I do. I love <laughs> it. It's, it's entertaining. So uh, <laughs> with that being said, uh, that's all I got. Um, thanks for coming on. Uh, and chatting Anna with us and uh, 
hopefully educating some people out there uh, who are listening to it. Um, and other than that, that's all I got. So thank you everyone for listening and tuning in uh, as normal. Um, oh man, the schedule is going to look a little rough here. Uh, Cause usually I want, I'd like to get these out every couple weeks, but uh, my work schedule this week and next week is pretty much ass. And then Diablo comes out on the 15th, which I, I have to admit to everyone. I'm, I'm playing that like a madman once it comes out. And then we have UFGT. That's the weekend after that. Uh, so if, if I can't get another episode to everyone in June, uh, my apologies ahead of time, but I will try my best to make some time uh, so we can get another one out. But, uh, hopefully this one will hold you over. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's really all I got. So thanks again for listening and we will catch you next time.